hey genealogy queens how are you so i was wondering for the longest time just sitting down and thinking you know like what am i gonna make like what new video am i gonna make what do my subscribers want to see what new things can i talk about what have i been really wanting to talk about and so i wanted to bring up the idea of people always using slavery as a reason for their european percentage whether it's five percent nine percent and please don't get me on the higher percentages because that's not slave blood <laughs> so um i really wanted to get into that because i'm still seeing a lot of people especially african americans talk about oh slave blood oh you know they they love to use that and negate their ancestry some way somehow to just talk about their African percentage, you know, and come up with as many excuses as possible. So one thing that really bothers me is a lot of people don't do research, especially my generation. They do not do research. And I know a lot about this stuff because I also went to school. I went to school, went to college. And some of these, pe and some of these people who may have not uh, went to college like me, um, they may know the information, but still want to deny it, I guess, because, you know, when growing up, I never had uh, this idea that a lot of people, African people in America have, you know, of blaming everything on white supremacy and um, wanting to just negate certain things about who they are. Um, and so I think people fail to understand that without research, doing actual research on certain things, you know, you can't be 100% full on, uh, positive that that information is real. And, um, a lot of people negate to really research and look into certain things like Bacon's Rebellion look into things like indentured servitude, really look into and accept things like that Africans had slaves um, and that they started slavery, looking into things like how um, there were at the time rich African-American people in the U.S. when slavery was happening that were free from slavery or weren't even, weren't even enslaved because they had so much money or they were of high caliber and they also um, may have we're not 100% sure, may have taken a part in slavery. When we take all this into account, you know, people need to understand that um, a lot of what you, what you get from these other YouTubers or what you get from your friends or whatever, you need to drop that because it's not 100% valid. I'm going to talk about two things really hard. I'm going to talk about Bacon's Rebellion, I'm going to talk about indigenous servitude and everything I just mentioned. So, pretty much what Bacon's Rebellion is. Bacon's Rebellion was the catalyst, was the start of white supremacy, of the one drop rule, of racism, of, uh, of just whiteness being at the top of the pyramid. Before Bacon's Rebellion, and Bacon's Rebellion was in the 1700s, I can't remember exactly if it was 1780s or whatever, but we didn't start seeing these, these um, I guess, uh, aspects or these um ideas of white supremacy and uh, with the one drop rule and all these things until after 1800 or the start of 1800 before 1800 we had europeans and africans mixing together legally it was legal i want people to understand that things this whole aspect of slavery not all that or people being in the Americas or all of this mess did not start at 1800. We had African Americans in America and and Europeans in America all that since people should know like the 1500s actually at least that's when things started kind of happening you know the 1600s and 1700s people were here in America Africans and Europeans what happened was there weren't a lot of African Americans or Africans in America as there are now or that there were in the 1800s and, you know, uh, uh, continued until 
at that time. So in the 1600s, 1700s, they, they were just kind of, they were kind of practicing with slavery or, or practicing with trade, at least. We didn't call it slavery yet, but we called it, they called it trade. And, you know, where people were kind of bringing people back and kind of exchanging goods and all that, or just working, which is where I get to indentured servitude, where you had Irish immigrants, Italian immigrants, uh, African immigrants, and all of that um, coming to the U.S. as indentured servants. And they worked and worked and worked until their time was up. Of course, they were supposed to get paid for that work. Um, and at that time, you had Africans and Europeans mixing, and it was legal. Legal all, all around. There was nobody that could be condemned or seen as bad mixing with somebody of African and European descent. Um, and once Bacon's Rebellion took place, that's when everything took a whole shift where anybody who had any little bit of African blood in them was considered African. It didn't matter if they were 5% African, they were seen as a black woman or, or an African man, whatever. It didn't matter. Okay. Um, and where whiteness was put at the top, white supremacy started and slaves were seen as just not even a person. Because with indentured servants, yes, they worked for, they had to work for something, but at the same time, they, were, they weren't treated bad, really. They, they weren't really treated as bad as slaves were. Um, and when slavery took into, into effect, a lot of the European slaves, European-American slaves or, or indentured servants or whatever got to kind of buy their way out of it. So they got to like leave while a lot of the African slaves didn't. And it turned into pretty much what it was seen or taught in school as. Um, a lot of people don't look as far back as what they should look at when it comes to slavery and it comes to um, this whole aspect of, of how America wants to see it. Um, another thing I wanna mention before I go back to that is the whole fact about um, Africans had slaves too. They had slaves in Africa, you know. So some of that African blood that you see in your DNA that makes up whatever it makes up could is probably also slave blood. I don't think people really understand that it's not just European blood that may be slave blood. And on some of that European blood, whether it's 9%, 5%, whatever, Moat probably isn't slave blood. It could also be blood from what I just mentioned. But um, I think people fail to realize that some of that African blood that you have may contribute to slave blood. And people fail to realize that not all Africans, slaves, mixed with Europeans or were or forceful, force, forceful, ah, I can't even, I can't even speak, were forcibly raped. Not all of them were forcibly raped. Not all of them had to go through that. So a lot of them may have seen it, but they never experienced it They're by themselves. They may have saw it, but they never had it happen to them. So for people to just randomly assume that because their parents were raped or their great, great, great grandparents were raped, that they're all of a sudden, it's their grandparents too, or great, 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 great grandparents that doesn't makes sense um you you know there there wasn't it just didn't make sense so then we move on to the rich you know african americans or africans within you know america at that time when we started seeing a big huge uh shipment of africans to america dealing with cotton and tobacco and sugarcane and all these things. Um, and we we start to see that um, in that realm, there were rich Africans who were kind of exempt from slavery. But the main question is, did they take part in slavery? Did they also have slaves of their own and kind of, you know, dibble and dabble in that? We will... I, I don't know the answer to that yet. I've heard that, that there were rich African Americans who took part in slavery, but I'm not sure if it's true. I know some Native Americans took part in slavery, but 
from what I know about that is it wasn't technically slavery. It was technically Native Americans taking in African slaves to save them from being slaves, which is another reason when we get into Native American ancestry, why people say, oh, my grandmother said we were Choctaw or we were Cherokee or whatever. Most likely they, they said that because they may have grown up in a tribe or they may have heard from their parents that grew up in a tribe that they were that and that's the only identity that they knew but it wasn't bloodline based so there's a lot of things that people don't understand and will not look up or or, or not or have the knowledge to really conceive it and be like oh yeah this is this happened you know um people have a one mindset nowadays to where they don't want to think about that they don't want to see it and I think that having a closed mind like that, you're not going to get really far. There's a lot more to what I'm saying. A lot more to what I'm saying. I can't remember 100% everything I learned in, in in my college class, but that was just the, the brink of it. I know after 1800, there were a lot of, like there was a certain point in time where Africans were not in the U.S. I know, I understand there were no Africans in the U.S., but within the 1600s and 1700s and 1800s there were Africans in the U.S. but after 1800 I know that's when there was a big fluctuation of Africans into the U.S. because of the slave trade and, and certain things but it was kind of just it was kind of like a test run before then but there were a good amount of Africans in the U.S. and they were mixing with you know Europeans and even Native Americans, but that was happening. And um, especially in, in, in uh, the Caribbean and Hispan in, in Hispanic countries where you had um, certain classifications, where you had Mestizo and all this, and, and you, had, um, you had Mestizo, you had, you had some other names, I can't fully remember, um, that, the other names, which Mestizo was like Spanish mixed with Native. Um, and then you had like a Native American mixed with African and all of that, those names. But it's a very interesting thing to look into. Um, some people know about that. It was like a caste system. But there was a point in time where they also had a system in, his, in the Hispanic countries, in Hispaniola, just like after Bacon's Rebellion, where it was like Africans were seen as terrible people. And you don't want to have African blood in your system. You want to wash that out. So... Um, there's a lot to what I'm saying even more that I can't get in one video, but I want to say stop using slavery as an excuse to disregard other stuff in your bloodline. It may not make you mixed, but at the same time, that's still part of you. So um, you can't just use that slave narrative because you, you, you don't want to have that European in your bloodline or whatever, or you're ashamed of it, or you want to be this black woman or hotep or 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 black uh super savior complex i don't know i don't know what but it, it's got to stop you guys because it just it's just got to stop so i gave you guys some knowledge on you know some some things that i can in one video but um hopefully i can get more advanced at youtube and I can really, really be able to do like maybe an hour long video where I can actually do the research with you um, and actually, you know, be able to go through it with you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope it was knowledgeable and enlightening. And um, let me know any other videos you guys want to see from me.